Hollywood airplane crash, high on intensity and action, but are they really reflective of reality? With the number of crashes we see in the movies and on television, one might be left with the impression that passenger airplanes are falling out of the sky at quite an alarming rate. So to reassure the general public that air travel is still your safest bet from point A to point B, we're going to ground some of Hollywood's most famous air crash accidents. At number 5 is the newest variation of the genre, Flight. In this movie, Denzel Washington plays a drug and alcohol addicted pilot who, after mechanical troubles, inverts his airplane in an effort to save it. While Flight got higher marks for its realism and special effects from the public, everything is not as it seems. First, with random drug testing and mandatory physicals, any pilot doing cocaine should be sniffed out quickly. Now, while it is possible for an airliner to fly upside down in some rare circumstances, that does not automatically correlate to a dual engine flame out. And to finish off flight, pilots normally slow down, not speed up when encountering severe turbulence, passengers don't need to brace for impact while still at 25,000 feet, and the McDonnell Douglas MD-80 has neither winglets or a fuel dumping system. At number 4 is the original Twilight Zone movie. Now, setting aside the fact that gremlins don't exist in real life, Captain Kirk really had nothing to worry about, even if one were actually on the wing. The fact is, every airliner, in this case a Douglas DC-6, is engineered to take into account events such as a catastrophic engine failure, no matter what the cause. Arthur Godfrey, acclaimed radio and television host, piloted an Eastern Airlines Constellation back in the 1950s. During an early documentary, he and his flight engineer feathered or shut down three of the aircraft's engines in flight. The Constellation kept on flying, but even if the Gremlin had destroyed all of the airplane's engines, successful unpowered landings have been made throughout all of aviation history. At number three is Top Gun. Do a barrel roll! Yes, even the most iconic film about fighter pilots isn't without its major and minor flaws. First, the bad guy's airplane of choice, the MiG-28, doesn't actually exist. Maverick is actually shooting down an American-made F-5 Freedom Fighter. Second, most jet fighters can't pull a negative 4G dot, considering that many of them are only limited to about 3 to 3.5 negative Gs. But how does Top Gun factor into Hollywood airplane crashes? It's not the crash that tragically killed Goose, but the complete lack of a crash at the beginning of the movie. When Maverick decides to keep up all those foreign relations, he inverts his F-14 above the enemy pilot. While it looks like this in the movie, it actually looks like this in reality. Sorry, but that's a collision of two airplanes waiting to happen. At number two is a pair of movies that are mathematically challenged. Die Hard 2's final takeoff scene clocks in at almost 8 minutes while Fast and Furious 6 gives 13 minutes to the runway action. Now in the real world, there are a few factors to take into account when it comes to length of a runway needed for an aircraft to take off. Things like runway elevation, air pressure, temperature, and the weight of the aircraft itself, those all have to be accounted for. Even when you take all those variables into account, a fully loaded 747 Jumbo jet still only needs around 45 to 55 seconds on average to lift off the ground when starting from a standstill. But Hollywood doesn't want basic arithmetic to get in the way of a mediocre story. In Die Hard 2, the 747 takes almost 9 times the average duration to achieve liftoff. This would necessitate a runway of over 10 miles long. Now, Dulles International's longest runway is just over 2 miles long. In Fast and Furious 6, the separation from reality is even more staggering. Quite a few other sources have tried to calculate the runway length needed for the movie's climax. Those efforts produce a runway length anywhere from 28 miles to the length of Europe. But the king of bad Hollywood airplane disaster movies has got to be the abysmal Airport 1977. We don't have enough time to go through everything wrong with this movie, but we'll indulge you with the basics. Take a 747 luxury liner filled with millionaires on the way to meet Mr. Stevens, played by Jimmy Stewart. The aircraft is hijacked by the first officer, and he flies at a couple dozen feet above the Bermuda Triangle to avoid radar detection, even though there is very little radar coverage in the Bermuda Triangle. In a movie scene so terrible it can only be compared with Jaws 3D, the Boeing 747's wingtip collides with an oil platform which inexplicably flames out the number 4 engine. Suddenly, a modern jumbo jet with three perfectly functioning engines can't climb a couple extra feet. Here's a video of a 757 losing half of its takeoff power after a bird strike. And guess what? If you look really closely, you can tell that it's still climbing. Yet here, a 747 with 75% of its power can't go up. Since it can't go up, then it obviously must go down and starts crashing into the ocean. But good news, they built this particular 747 at a naval shipyard for nuclear submarines. 
because it hits the ocean widely out of control and stays completely intact before sinking into the waves. I'd get into how quickly the cabin should have filled up with water and drowned everybody inside, but this movie practically debunks itself. There you have it, the top 5 Hollywood aviation disaster disasters. You're not going to find a more inclusive list of improbable things Hollywood has ever done with an airplane crash. Hey, thanks for watching the air show. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. But I'm the only one who does know. Right now.